Hey everyone, Sacriassin here, and in this video I'm doing something a bit different, and I'm using this new camera I got, which is a it's a GoPro Hero 3 Plus Black Edition, and uh, basically I have this head strap, and the camera's attached to that, so it's like right in the middle of my forehead, and when I first saw it I thought, wow, this is great, because when I paint, I paint at the Cintiq and that's at the desk, but when I draw, when I sketch, I really like to sketch on the bed and I just put my knees up and I rest my sketchbook on my knees and so it was really hard to think of a way of recording videos traditionally. I used to contemplate like, well, maybe I can try it on the floor or something and it just it didn't work out well, um, it didn't feel comfortable and I wasn't really able to draw properly. So anyway, so then I got this and I thought, yeah, that'll be, that'll be a good thing. But it's, I don't know, you, you guys let me know if this is actually <laughs> something you would want to watch because it's looking pretty sloppy and I'm not sure why anyone would rather watch this than uh, when I just draw on the computer because this, Thing doesn't move out and I apologize in advance for times when um, I'll go off screen I'll be drawing a little bit off screen I try and adjust it as soon as I can um, the good thing with the GoPro is you can download an app for your phone where you can actually see what's going on so sometimes I just forget to pay attention to the phone and then it's like oh I'm actually off screen anyway so there's that and yeah, let me know, um, do you like seeing more traditional drawing videos or should I just stick with the computer? Because so far I feel like working on the computer in Photoshop or Sketchbook Pro or whatever, it's just more clean and it's easier to convey ideas than to do it this way. But maybe there is a benefit from doing things traditional. And I will do my best not to criticize my work as much. Um, I did a video called Cypress Art Progress 2013, and I actually upset quite a few of my viewers by how much I was um, saying my own work is, is bad, and I actually tried to reduce it, and it still was that I was... Uh, saying my work is bad, so I learned that uh, a few people actually contacted me <laughs> by email that, you know, you should just say things like you're not happy with the piece and not necessarily that the piece sucks because if it sucks then and it's better than the stuff they can do then, you know, it's not nice to hear. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry if I discouraged anyone. Um, yeah, it's this thing of, I really do feel they're not very good, but that's just because my eyes are at a certain level, and I think that's a never-ending thing. You'll always think you're not very good, so um, maybe it is better to not even mention that you're not very good, because other people, yeah, maybe don't feel so good to hear that. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm sketching in my sketchbook, it is so hard not to say how horrible this is, but I'll try. <laughs> anyway, uh, and I'm using a, the pen I'm using is, it's a Uniball Signo DX 0 0.38. The 0 0.38 is the size of the, uh, the tip, so it's really thin, and it's a gel pen. Um, I try to find this pen because I'm, running out of them and running out of refills so I went on the Uniball site and apparently they don't sell this type anymore um, I got a bunch when I was in Taiwan but uh, can't seem to pick up any more of these they have a different type that is a retractable one but it's uh, this particular one they don't seem to sell um, but any kind of gel pen would work well I just like gel pens because uh, everything is very 
consistent while there's ink. Um, with ballpoint pens and things, I guess you get more range, but the ink doesn't seem quite so clean, quite as good quality. Uh, something I wanted to mention here is I'd been asked, and maybe I'll do a video explaining this in more detail, but I'd been asked how to maintain proportions when working traditionally. And what I had done with this figure, and it's a bit past now, so you might have to go back to see what I'm talking about, but I started with, I believe, the torso and then the head. But anyway, once I've got the head in, then what I like to do, or once I've got the head and torso in, then I know from the top of the head to the bottom of the, or to the crotch, it's half the distance uh, from the crotch to uh, the bottom of the feet, right? So if I have the first measurement, then I put like a check mark on the bottom of where, you know, then the feet will be. And then I know, okay, so my figure, when I do the legs, they have to fit in this amount. Because what I did have a problem with is, and even the first drawing I did sort of has this problem, where you get tunnel vision. You look at the head and you're drawing the head and then you move down to the neck and then you move down to the shoulders and, and you're not viewing the figure as a whole. And so when I'm doing a straight up and down figure where I can measure the, the proportions, I know like the crotch is halfway, so just get that in and get the feet and the head and now I know my figure has to occupy this much space. That helps, but if the figure is in a different pose where, um, like crouched or, or any pose where you cannot easily use that measurement, then what I do is I consciously move my eyes, like I flick from the top of the head down to the feet or knees or whatever, like I just flick up and down with my eyes, I dart them up and down, and I do that so I'm breaking that uh, connection of seeing the figure where I just see like I you got to see the forest for the trees and the way you do that is to not just focus on one tree but to look around like just by looking um, you'll see more and another way of dealing with this is you know you can use a mirror to spot your flaws but you could also uh, just for seeing proportion a good ways to step back step back from the image um, because of the way I'm drawing this sketchbook is again it's at my knees so it's pretty close and I'm lazy so <laughs> I'm not gonna get up and like put my hold my sketchbook back and then and then and then sort of look at it like I would with a painting and you know fold my arms and look for is this in proportion or is the head too big or too small um, so instead what I've started to do is that that technique of looking rapidly up and down or around the figure so I, I'm not just seeing uh, the head and it's not something I do like a ton it's not like I'm looking up down up down up down I just like go up down and that's it and then it's enough to say like oh yeah yeah the figures sort of getting a bit wonky or or even to visualize where you think um, the figure is going to start and stop and then the other way of dealing with that is just do a ton of drawings if you get used to drawing the more and more you draw the better everything gets but it's a slow process so for instance maybe your problem is you make the legs too long okay and uh, for me I'm, I purposely make the legs long but I'm doing that on purpose but anyway let's say that's your problem well maybe you don't notice you do a drawing and then you don't notice that the legs are too long that's fine the next day you look at the drawing it's like wow the legs are way too long okay so now the next drawing you do you consciously think about it and then you think okay I made the leg shorter and you think it's okay next day you look at it it's like man the legs are still too long so it's that kind of incremental change and then after you've done tons of drawings like that eventually you've got the proportions pretty much solid you know like okay this is what the proportion should look like this is a good ratio uh, between you know legs and torso and that's what I'm gonna stick with so it comes with time and uh, or you could do the eye flick thing where it's just a, it's just a way of saying okay let me refocus my vision and see this image as a whole instead of focusing on 
each part separately because that is really what causes the the mistakes in proportions i think is to start looking at individual things and not seeing the whole image all right so what else well I'm not happy with what I'm doing right now. I'm not going to say it's really terrible, but let's just say I'm not happy with it. Um, when I first started drawing, I noticed, and this is weird watching yourself draw. I, I, I didn't know I hold the pencil like that, and I don't really like it. I feel like I'm drawing too fast and too slow. So what I mean by that is when I actually draw, because I, I started, I, I did some more drawings after that weren't recorded, and I noticed, oh, I draw a lot slower. So I must have been very nervous when I was recording this. And so that's what I mean by I draw too fast. But what I mean by I draw too slow is you'll notice that because I'm nervous, I'm really timid in a way. I mean, maybe it doesn't show up that way but like I'm timidly putting in strokes. And I think time does fix that. And often that's the case, you need to warm up. It's just like working out any muscle, you know? If you go to the gym and you're gonna lift weights, well, you probably wanna do some cardio first to, to get the blood running, right? So that your muscles have blood in them. And then when you do work out, it's gonna be easier and you'll be able to lift heavier weights. And um, so yeah hopefully as time goes on my lines will get more confident and smoother i'm sorry i'm off the screen here but okay good i adjusted it <laughs> um another thing i've been getting a lot of questions on lately is study schedule so this is mostly for people who are wanting to become professional artists and they want to know what should I work on and they might show me their portfolio and I sort of feel not qualified to give too much advice on this because right now I'm not working as a concept artist I'm not working um, I'm working for a small st studio but as a freelancer so it doesn't really count in a way I guess um, and so I don't know. I, I don't feel like I'm really right. I'm, I'm currently really, I don't have a finger on the pulse of the industry. So I don't know what a good portfolio really should look like. But what I do see is, um, and what you see here is the phone <laughs> with the uh, preview on it. Anyway, so what I do see is a lot of portfolios that are art school portfolios. And the problem with art school portfolios is they're made up of assignments that you do in art school and they're kind of all over the place it's like a little bit fine art and then maybe some are called character designs but they're not really character designs they're sort of like yeah i did a drawing of a character i'm gonna call it a character design because a real character design is about exploring the ver variations of a character or uh if you're not just doing variations, it's to say, um, you know, you've done research and you've explored these cultures and maybe you're doing clothing and it's like, okay, well, this is influenced from this or these colors are influenced from that culture. And it's, it's a very specific thing, character design. It's almost like, to me, if you're gonna do a portfolio and you're going for character design, it would just be character design. You wouldn't have, Character design, landscapes, portraits, still life, life drawing. Like, to me, that just seems... Like, that's that's what the portfolio would be for getting into an art school, maybe. They want to see that, yeah, you have range. But um, for a final portfolio, when you're trying to get to a professional level, I really feel like... It's, it's a good idea to be a bit more specific on what you want to do. Um, and so, yeah, that's what I see. The other thing I see is that the study schedules that people are giving themselves, aside from being all over the place, they're 
not focused enough. And it's a case of people are getting into painting too soon. I see that's the biggest problem. Um, because drawing is the most important thing. And, well, this is my opinion. Because I'm sure there are people who, you know, they didn't do any drawing. Maybe they, they didn't even do painting. They just went straight into 3D and they, they became professional and, and they're doing well. Fine. But from my personal experience, I've just grown so much more with drawing. It seems to answer every question. For instance, when I draw more and then I go into painting, I'm better at painting. But when I paint more and then I go back to drawing, it doesn't carry over as well. And that might just be me again. But uh, what I do see is a lot of basic drawing problems, like the anatomy's not that good or the proportions aren't that good good or the per perspective's not that good and again I feel guilty about saying all this because I don't feel like I have good proportions or anatomy or perspective and that's why I'm working at it but it's this feeling of people just they haven't been drawing enough and I remember when I first started learning to paint um, I took lessons with well, the first person I took lessons with, she was, no, the second person, because the first person was just a guy out of art school. Anyway, second person, she was an oil painter, and her method was to use uh, grid drawing, where she would draw a grid over a photo and then translate that to the canvas, and then you draw the same grid, copy the drawing, and that's fine. And then she did paint, and it seemed to work okay, and the results were okay. Um... But you couldn't really do much in terms of imagination, you couldn't be that creative. So when I did want to be creative, that method, although I never really used it because I wasn't, I just couldn't, I, I, I didn't like using grids, so I just didn't. But um, when I went to the next teacher, he told me that a lot of people who come to him, a lot of the uh, students who would come to him would say things like, I want to learn how to paint. And he'd be like, okay. And then he, he'd say, okay, so, uh, you know, get a sketchbook and get some charcoal and do a drawing of this. And they'd be like, wait, drawing? I don't, I don't want to do a drawing. I want to learn how to paint. And then he would try to explain to them that if you want to know how to paint, you have to learn how to draw because drawing is the foundation of painting. Drawing means you have proportion, perspective, anatomy. Um even composition, although it's it's easy to do composition, just pure painting as well. But yeah, so then they would, they would get frustrated and be like, I didn't come here to learn how to draw, I just want to know how to paint. And it's like, you can't paint well. Well, I don't want to say you can't paint well if you can't draw, because I've seen people who paint decent, but they can't draw. But they are limited. I do notice that. Um, you'll see things that are just off it's like oh that perspective's off and maybe the layman or or an amateur or someone who's just not an artist they it doesn't bother them so this is something that goes through my mind like wait are my standards the same as the standards of most people and should i even be judging my work by my own standards or even by the industry standards because um, right now, that's what I do, and then when I look at these sketches, I think they're terrible. Um, but then the important thing is also to remember that, well, that's not what normal people or people who don't have a lot of experience in art see. So, I don't know, but then at the same time, there's the, the opposite of that is true, where you get someone who they think they're pretty good at drawing, and it's like, well, what are you comparing it to? Are you comparing it to your other classmates? Are you comparing it to your family, saying you're really good at drawing your whole life? Or do you have an understanding of what a professional drawing level should look like? And how close or far are you from that? So I don't I don't know when it comes to myself I've started to have some some doubts as to what my level is. I I feel like in some ways I'm 
pretty close to professional, maybe even a little above average, and in other ways I'm severely lacking. Um, but yeah, drawing is, it's really, really important, and it's so, it's so great when you can do it, because with other things, they might come faster. So here's something that's interesting, is that a lot of people find photorealism impressive. And I did too when I first saw it. When I first saw photorealistic pictures, I was like, wow, now here's someone with skill. This person knows what they're doing. Um, and everything else seemed sort of childish. So I'd look at the cartoons and it's like, hmm, yeah, that doesn't look like it's that hard the the photo real stuff because I felt I could draw that you know if I just practice I could draw that but the photo real things look like whoa this is so cool how'd you make it look so real and then I studied how to do that you know you get your values right and uh, it took about a month of uh, every day maybe 10, 12 hours a day working on values. I would do charcoal drawings, uh, pencil sketches. Eventually I moved into digital and just focusing on getting things looking good, black and white, getting the values right. And then it's a bit of work to move that into color. But once you've got that, once you've got black and white and color, you're pretty much using reference a lot. So it's just a matter of the problem has been solved in a way. I mean, the reference that you're using, that's the solution to the problem. And then it's just a matter of getting your image to look like that. So it's like, well, okay, first you get your drawing, are my angles right? Angles are very easy to check. Once you practice, you just, you, you can hold up your pen um, and, and hold it against the angle you want to look at and then transfer that to your, uh, and, and do that to the reference transfer that over to your own work and check it like hey are these angles the same if not it's wrong do these are these distances the same and that's what you're doing with reference eventually you don't need a pen to check or anything to check you just you you visually can see okay here's some negative shapes uh and there's a book drawing on the right side of the brain this is very good for teaching this how to see angles how to um break things into abstract shapes but this is really good for copying what you see. Uh, and then, you know, you got your value, you got your color, you get that down, and then it's easy, you know? In, I think, six months to a year, you could get pretty much anybody with the right training to be able to do photorealism well, <laughs> where it's like, yeah, it looks really convincing, it looks really realistic. But that is not the case for imagination. I don't think so. It's a completely different thing. It's much harder. And to me, it's much more impressive. So when I see photoreal painters and they do their thing, I am so not impressed because I know what it takes to do that. And I also know the deep limitation. I mean, in the end, it's like, yeah, I can do this painting, but only if I have reference. And, okay, so if you like photorealism and you like painting from reference, I'm not knocking it. I'm not, uh, in no way am I saying that is not valid or that's not good, you shouldn't do that. No, of course, if you like doing that, do that, that's fine. I'm just saying from my experience, I really thought it was super hard and super skilled and super impressive and then I learned later on that, oh, wait, no, drawing from imagination is like a thousand times harder. And so that's all. I'm just saying my own experience. I don't even know what my point is. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I haven't, I haven't been talking about what I'm drawing uh, much at all. So right now, I'm just drawing a woman. Um, I get asked a lot to, or I have been asked a lot, to draw different body shapes and body sizes. And uh, I, I will, I should. I should do that. Because um, it is true that there are a lot more different body shapes than just the 
the typical super skinny person or it's the same with guys though you know every character is super muscly and i'm really guilty of doing that i do the same for women i make them you know too skinny or i stretch the proportions and it's just aesthetics it's it's not a commentary on society or the way society should be or objectification or not objectification it's just drawing what looks cool and what looks cool i think i think everyone should just draw whatever they want you know um i'm not a fan of judging people on their art it's a little bit like if someone tells me um you know draw this because you should you know you should draw people that are more like the people you see every day it's like well why don't if you're really passionate about that why don't you do that you know instead of telling me what to draw <laughs> maybe you could make that change happen um i saw this thing there's this uh video game this this lady anita sarkeesian who was uh talking about uh tropes in video games and how uh there are, you know, there's a patriarchy that's trying to say, you know, you need to have damsels in distress and whatever. And it's like, mm. sort of got annoyed because it's, it's this case of even if everything of what she's saying is true, and she did have some points, the thing is like, well, what are you doing to change that? You know, it's not, I mean, it's not up to me. If I like to draw something, it's not up to me to change who I am to fit your expectation, right? And that's why a lot of times I'll do, I really like sharp drawings. I like sharp things. I like, like I like to make my chin sharp. I like to make my noses sharp. I like to make my hair sharp. I'm, my, my favorite shape is a triangle. You'll see like lots of sharp stuff. That's what I like. And I've had comments where people are like, oh, the it looks good, but the chin is too sharp. And honestly, I don't care. Cause it's like, well, I like it. <laughs> so, and I think there's there's a balance to everything. There's a balance to that too, you know. Someone may may have a good point where it's like, yeah, maybe you are doing something. And I think I think the way to answer that is to ask yourself, well, what what are you trying to do, you know? Are you doing this on purpose because you really enjoy it or are you doing this cuz you don't know any better? And maybe I mean, all criticisms have some truth to them. It's just a matter of do you want to accept that truth or not? Or is that, does that truth resonate with your truth? Because I feel, you know, there's not just a truth. There's just lots of different kinds of truths. So here what I'm doing with this thing is I did the side view and uh, I'm blocking out the silhouette with that black area. Um, at first I did it to correct mistakes, which I guess it's the same as what I'm doing here. But I also realized like eh, it's kind of, it creates a certain certain amount of design as well. Like, even if it wasn't just for fixing mistakes, it's sort of cool. So, maybe I would do that more often. But yeah, I'm trying to draw the girl in a side view. And often I'll do that whenever I... Uh, right now I'm just sketching from imagination. I'm, I have no idea what I'm doing when I do it. And I pretty much just put down stuff. And start drawing and see what happens and then if i do come up with a character then i might um flesh out that character try it from a different view see what it looks like so yeah that's what i'm doing and this isn't always what i do but it's sometimes what i do is just have no ideas and just draw uh what i do like to do though is I really like, before I draw, I like to saturate my mind with imagery. And so one way of doing that is to just look through a bunch of different artists. But I actually prefer to just look at one artist uh, and just keep looking through their work, looking through it, look through their gallery. Um, I, have, I have tons of folders of artists with all their images or a lot of their images and so it's very easy to just look through that until my finger gets itchy and I'm just trying to when I look at the images I really try and look at them you know it's it's almost like 
how can I say it? It's like my brain is a sponge and I want to I want to suck up all that like they're like some juice. <laughs> and I want to suck up my sponge so it's full of their juice, their brain juice, their art juice. <laughs> Uh, and then take my sponge that's saturated with this art juice and take a blank piece of paper and then squeeze that sponge so all their art juice falls all over my paper. Yeah, I probably took that analogy too far. But anyway, so lately, or for the past long time, I have just been doing that with uh, Kim Jong-gi, who I had the great pleasure of seeing him actually drawing live at a massive black workshop in LA and that was amazing he is I okay he is my all-time favorite artist in terms of all time like ever I in my opinion he is the greatest artist that I've seen ever in in terms of his broad scope I would say like there are people who they do better gestures there are people who they do better compositions there are people who do uh, better anatomy more exaggerated things you know but it's like as a whole when you add up all the stuff he has and you put it on a scale and then put any other artist I don't know any one that comes close to him and just seeing him drawing in person he was even better than i thought so anyway anyway i have his books and i've anytime he puts out a book i buy them immediately the shipping is really expensive because it's from korea um so i think i don't know if it's i think it's like 80 dollars just for shipping and uh but i always find it worth it because the books are huge and amazing and as I look through them I never am not inspired um, so yeah I I do that I saturate my brain with his and the thing with his stuff is um, what makes it so good is that he he doesn't have too much of a style like he has a st clearly you can tell a drawing when it's done by him but it's not like he pushes things too much one way or another so it's pretty generic and so when I do my drawings I'm not really influenced by his style I'm more just like oh look at how he did this uh, maybe in maybe the anatomy more than anything or the way he does clothing like I'm 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 looking at the thing not his take on the thing you know, if that makes any sense. Because there's certain artists that they'll draw... They'll draw an eye, but they draw an eye in their way. And that's also me. Like, I try and draw eyes in my style now. But when I look at his eyes, he's just going straight from reality. And then there's limited uh, distortion. So then it's like, oh, you could actually learn how to do things from looking at this. And yeah, so... Yeah, that's why he's my all-time favorite artist... I think, you know, someone could say, well, what about Rembrandt? I think, well, Rembrandt's emotions, much better. Much stronger, you know, it has more depth. But overall, no. Because <laughs> Kim Jong-gi has, he has, you know, he has humor and also serious stuff. And he draws animals as good as he draws buildings, as good as he draws everything. So anyway... I'm a I'm a total fanboy when it comes to to Kim Jong Gi, and I'm so happy that he was as or even better than I thought. But that what that did tell me though is that, or what it did show me is that there's there's a limit to how much skill I can get, and I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to get to his level. Um, and people talk about talent and talent existing or not existing. And I think I've always thought that it's not helpful to think that talent exists and that you cannot do something. I don't think that's helpful because 
let's say you do want to do something, so let's say you're not talented, and are you going to let that stop you? I don't think you should. I think you should just figure out what you can do and then be smart about it. So for me, I never, th I never felt I was very... I mean, I did when I was really young, I felt I was talented because I seemed to have an easier time drawing. But there's that difference that I brought up where, you know, you're comparing yourself to peers, to classmates, and you think, hey, I'm pretty okay. And then you compare yourself to professionals or a real talent. And it's like, oh my god, what was I thinking? <laughs> and what I what I kept hearing from from artists who were talented is they couldn't really explain what they were doing it was sort of like well how did you know how to do that well it's just intuition well i just feel it and i do think that's important i think intuition plays a big role in things and i'm i'm really starting to um capitalize on this idea of intuition and understanding that we all have intuition whether we are talented or not uh perhaps talented people have an easier time but I did not fit that classic idea of what an artist was when they would say, you know, I'm super passionate, I love drawing, I don't know, you know, I don't know how I do it, I just, I just do it. And for me, I was more the science type where it's like, I need, un I need explanations to things. It does not help me just to, just to have an answer like, well, just feel it out. It's... It's too vague. I want to understand. How, yeah, but how? And I was also super impatient. And I, I, I used to think... And, and this is a bad thing to be this impatient. Because what happens is you look for tutorials too much. You spend... Instead of drawing for an hour, you watch YouTube videos for an hour. And... <laughs> stop. Why are you watching this video? You should be drawing. <laughs> I don't know. No, keep watching. Ah. Um, but anyway, yeah, so... But the, the thing is that what I eventually realized is that too is its own talent, you know? Maybe I don't... Maybe I'm not like most other artists. But you find what you're good at, and that is your talent. And then you use that. You make the most of that. So... Yeah, so that's what I try to do, which is I'm going to use my analysis and I'm going to use it to my advantage. And luckily, it, it's helped me uh, as a teacher. I, I hope um, I'm able to break down things in a more understandable way. And it's because that's the only way I can do it. I cannot do this stuff from... From just feeling it up, I have to understand it. And uh, one of the things I understood that was the most important is to draw and just keep drawing and don't worry about understanding so much because a lot of this comes from mileage. A lot of this comes from, and I've said it before, training your brain to become an artist's brain. And let's say your left side of the brain is the part that's, you know, that you can control more in terms of you're conscious of how it's interpreting information. Well, the right side, you've got to feed it by practicing. The things like muscle memory, just do things over and over again. And then you'll be surprised at what your brain is capable of achieving. And yeah, so it's just a matter of keep working at it. Draw and draw more and <laughs> try and enjoy what you're doing. So again, sorry I'm off screen. Every time I actually look at this um, the screen, I notice I'm off screen, so I hope um, the whole thing <laughs> was an off screen. <laughs> Come on, man. There you go. And, yeah, getting close to the end now. So, I think my lines are getting a bit more, more free. Yeah. See, I'm using more of my arm. You'll notice my fingers don't move as much. My wrist isn't really moving that much. And so that means that's usually what happens when I'm more warmed up and it usually takes about an hour of warm up. Anyway, that's, that's it for this. So hoped it helped and thanks for watching. 
and let me know if you want me to do more traditional or maybe I should just stick with digital and just forget about all this traditional nonsense because I'm off screen so much and you know yeah if it's too ugly just let me know and I'll try and do more digital works only